Hi folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride. Today, Rob and I are here in Las Vegas, Nevada at the SEMA show, and we are here with Mike Satterfield, better known to some of us as the Gentleman Racer. Mike, thanks for taking your time with us today. Absolutely, thanks for uh, having me on, guys. Now, behind us, we have a special project that you've been working on. Tell us what we have. So this is a 1987 Grand Wagoneer uh, that we built for the fashion and home brand Laura Ashley, which is celebrating their 70th anniversary next year. So this vehicle was built to kind of commemorate their 70th anniversary and kind of highlight their kind of return back to uh, the U.S. market in a big way. They're really doing a big push next year. So, uh, yeah, it's been a, a fun project to kind of incorporate that brand into another iconic brand like Jeep. So, you know, let, let's back up a minute and then we'll come back to the car. But what, what is it that you do? So we have a, the, the website, obviously, The Gentleman Racer. Yep. Um, we also have another website. It's called Growing Up Texas that my wife runs. Uh, but our main business is we're, we're a marketing consulting firm that does stuff in the auto world. So we build and design custom vehicles, um, integrate cars into content, create content for brands. Um, and we also do a lot of fun stuff. Like we just had an event for Tudor where I got to build my vintage race car and wrap it all in Tudor and bring it out for that event. So oh, Tudor watches and you know vintage 70s right. race cars and stuff like that. So we do a lot of stuff where we integrate cars into other lifestyle events to kind of bring that car culture into things. So a lot of, a lot of companies hire us for that. And if you haven't had a chance, check out his website because the General Racer has He's an exquisite writer. Let's just put it that way. It is really fun reading. So if you haven't checked that out, give that a check. So let's talk about this project. Now, when you got the car, yeah, what shape was it in? So this sat in a field in North Texas for who knows how many years. <laughs> okay. um, it had all the wood had been you know sun bleached, and they tried to paint over it. A lot of pieces were missing. Uh, it was basically no drivetrain, just kind of a, a rolling body. Uh, interior was all sun rotted. It had mud daubers and oh, <laughs> wasp boy. nests in it. Um, so we started, we picked that up in last December, pulled it out of the field, and then kind of started doing the concept drawings and things like that. And we started working on it just about six months ago. Wow. Yeah. And you brought that all the way to this point. So you, you do you do all the work yourself? Do you have some uh, people that you work with? Well, we work really closely with Apex Auto Works in Houston. Apex, um, I've been working with Richard uh, since we met racing down in Mexico uh, a few years back, and Richard's great. I mean, his guys did the paint and body work. They did the engine drivetrain swap. We put a 5.3 liter 2016 Chevy motor in this. Oh, nice. Uh, so it'll, it'll start, run, stop better. Um, they did all the actual like conversion pieces and the paint and body work on it. And then we worked with uh, Wagon Master, who actually makes this reproduction wood trim. And they came out, sent their guy out who did all the wood on it. And watching this go from plain white back to the wood, wood. was so transformable. It was so cool to look at. Um, but yeah, it was th those guys who couldn't have done it without them. Uh, Wagon Master and obviously uh, Apex Auto Works in Houston. Um, but yeah, the vehicle's here with Toyo. So it's running on the, on the Toyo tires. And we got someone setting off an alarm over there. Yeah, <laughs> that, that would be apropos. <laughs> so, um, you know, no project ever goes quite as smoothly oh, as, no. as you think. So, I mean, you didn't have a lot of time to put this together. No, no. So, were, were there, I mean, just just the, you know, when you look at the interior, which is, you know, the, the Laura Ashley design, what, did you send the seats out to have that done? Did, did they come to you and do them? So, we, we actually worked, uh, we had a, an original upholstery shop that we worked with before lined up, and then they just kind of pulled out last minute. So, we got super fortunate. We found a shop called Upholstery by Poe in Bryan, Texas. It's literally 10 minutes from my house. Okay. And this guy is so talented. He took my sketches and the materials I gave him, and he put this together in about a week and a half, two weeks, all from, from scratch. We started with raw door cards. We started with leather. We had a, a cat skin leather interior as the base for the front and back seats. But everything else he fabricated. He recovered the dash in, in leather. Um, did the headliner in the plaid, which is super cool. Recovered the um, the sun visors, uh, and then the carpeting, of course, is from ACC. They make all the best kits. They drop right in, so we just had to drop that in, trim it. Uh, but while he was doing that, we were bolting other stuff on, putting the carpet in. You had to, and have we were been picking doing up pieces. Yeah, we were picking time. up pieces to put stuff together as it went. So, uh, yeah, Poe did an incredible job, and uh, I was really, really happy to have him. He also did my other truck that we have here too. So. Uh, I mean, in, in the span of a couple of weeks, he did a lot of work for us and excellent job all the way around. Really captured the sketches that I did and brought them to life. You know, this, I mean, it's really neat when you look at it. I mean, even the armrests. Yeah. Have Laura Ashley in them and the, and the headliner. 
I mean, that's all over now. The, the problem will be how many people will be asking if it, when, it, when it's coming up for sale <laughs> and how, how many are being made. We, we've actually already had that question. Back, back, back in the, you know, in, 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 the, in the 70s, 80s, this would have been like the top seller for Jeep. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and that's kind of what we wanted to create. We've done these vehicles in the past where we take kind of a concept of something that maybe didn't exist but could have, um, like our 75 King Ranch that we built. Like Ford never made a King Ranch back then. Uh, we did a, a golf racing Ford Fairlane a few years ago that was like Europe, European touring car, but by Holman Moody. Um, so we really wanted to create something like an Eddie Bauer edition or an LL Bean edition they used to do in the 80s, but around Laura Ashley had Laura Ashley worked with Jeep back then and uh, and put this together. So that, that was kind of the goal, is to make it look like something that could have existed back in the 80s. Back, and, and it certainly does. Now, um, Laura Ashley is coming out in conjunction with your car in... Uh, well, starting now, but in a year, mm -hmm. there's a uh, what, what we call their their big release. Well, next year is their 70th anniversary, there you uh, go. and we're actually uh, on the team putting together the tour for that. So this vehicle is going to be going to several stops across the country. Um, so far, I know we're going to be probably in Austin, Texas, uh, Charleston, uh, probably Boston, New York. Uh, but it's going to be going around, and and it's going to be a tool for them for photography and stuff, obviously for their their anniversary, but also just as a big element that's going to be at these events for people to kind of really connect with, take photos with, and things like that. We actually have a couple other pieces that are coming that are going to kind of complete this, including a, a Poe's working on it right now. He's actually doing upholstered matched luggage that will oh, go on the nice, back. That's nice. all the old hard oh, sure. suitcases. Yeah, the matching luggage. One, one will be floral, one will be pa the, the plaid, so it'll, it'll be alternating uh, patterns, so it'll be really, really cool. But like these products in the back are actually Laura Ashley's um, products, their home products that you can buy right now. So um, their, their store is online. They've got a couple retailers in the U.S., so they're really kind of expanding the brand, bringing it back to kind of where it was back in the 80s and 90s. So your wife has been sort of instrumental yes. in, in, in getting this project going. So tell us how this all started. So my wife is not a car person per se. She likes cars, but she's not a car person. And I, I remember, uh, I saw this Grand Wagoneer. I thought, man, that is such a good deal. I gotta pick that up. And I called her, I was like, hey, what about a Grand Wagoneer? And she just lost her mind. Because uh, for her, this was the car growing up that was like the top mm -hmm. tier luxury yep. car. I mean, you, this was the car, like she, she dreamed about, she would see this in town. This was like, that's the car. So she was already excited about that. And then another brand, which I wasn't super familiar with at the time was Laura Ashley. I, I grew up on the West Coast. We didn't have a lot of Laura Ashley uh, presence out there. It's more of a Southern and East Coast brand. Mm -hmm. um, so when I, I, I saw how much she loved this brand, was so interested, I actually reached out to their, their marketing team and said, hey, we're building this Grand Wagoneer already, but what if we took it up a notch and made it a Laura Ashley and they absolutely loved it. Um, so we, we did a trip, we flew out to, to uh, the, the last year to South Carolina, went through their archives, picked out the fabrics, met their whole team and uh, they've been really wonderful to work with. And, and Jennifer, uh, she saw it for the first time at the show the other day and her reaction was just over the top because we literally, we were working on this thing right before the show. Yeah, loaded she probably up on the hadn't night. had a chance to even see she, it. She just saw it at the show for the first time. So she was blown away by it and <laughs> really, really loved it. So That's awesome. Now. Um, any, we've talked about the engine a little bit. It was a drivetrain underneath, you know, like the, the wheels where they changed. I mean, you got original rims. Yeah, we had the original wheels refinished. Um, they're wearing Toyo tires, because uh, Toyo, this is actually one of their spaces they gave us to bring the vehicle out here, okay. which is great. Um, Champion built a custom radiator for us to accommodate the 5.3 liter swap. So okay. we got a beautiful, huge aluminum radiator in there. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's almost, as stock as you can get. Another cool thing we added was the Linkswell um, screen and, and sound system, which is a, a, a basically like a modern touch screen that gives you CarPlay and navigation, okay. all this stuff, uh, without being too over the top and too intrusive in the vehicle. The, the, the glove box still opens, everything still works around it. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty much the goal was to make it look as stock as possible. You know, and it, and it does, it's, it's stunning. So, I mentioned this before, but not every project goes like it is. So let's take a walk to the front here because <laughs> just shortly, <laughs> shortly before you were going to leave, yeah, you, you, somehow the front grill broke. So we don't know who, no one, no one fessed up to it at the shop, but uh, while everything was getting done, the swaps, we, they test fitting this grill, and this grill was sitting in the shop and someone leaned on it and cracked it, so we had to repatch it repaint it and get it done and this is actually an earlier model grill but we actually like the way this one looked a little better um the grills for these are very very hard yeah, to find there, yeah there, that was the one thing that was really surprising uh, this vehicle was built from 1962 to 1991 
which you'd think there'd be just Tons a plethora of parts. of parts everywhere for this thing. Uh, but unfortunately, there's a lot of things that are just unobtained. Like, no one makes reproduction bumpers, uh, and these are aluminum, too, by the way. Interesting. Uh, so, uh, the grills aren't made. This is an NOS piece that we had to track down. Uh, the, one of the mirrors is an NOS piece we had to track down. So, there was a lot of parts hunting, and uh, we used eBay Motors a lot to find kind of those random things uh, that you just can't get anywhere. Uh, thankfully, Wagon Master does do the wood, because that was a big, like, where are we going to get the right. correct wood for it? Um, the, the, we refinished the emblems and reattached those emblems. Um, so yeah, a lot of it was just reproduction uh, and hunting and making stuff. We made a lot of stuff too. Well, you know, and, and the front grill normally would have been chrome. Awesome. So, yeah. so you would have had to sand all this down. Yeah, and then the plastic too. So it's that plastic chrome. So getting it to look right is, is, is pretty pretty hard to do. So you have got hours and hours of time into this. Yeah, the guys, they, they really did a great job working on it. Um, I, I was driving back and forth to Alvin, Texas, where <laughs> Apex is about a two-hour drive from me. Hey. So I have a lot of miles back and forth up and down the highway. Uh, no kidding. Now, is it open? Can we take a peek at the inside? It's actually sealed up right now. <laughs> okay, well, uh, that's fine. We, we can we can we, at least see through the windshield here. Yeah, but. We, we actually sealed it up because we had people uh, that were jiggling the handles and pulling on it really hard we didn't want them to these things are as 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 tough as they look they're very um tractor like and very utilitarian and very very uh inexpensively made that's what's so wild as you look at how luxurious this thing's considered yeah and honestly how how interesting how bad the build quality was back in the day we did a lot of work to fix those build quality wait, issues wait. A lining, aligning seams oh my and doors, doors and, and yes. yeah and, and fixing uh fixing the actual strikers and door lock knobs and all that stuff uh, we had to rebuild all the window motors in it um all the tracks had to be redone and Man. thankfully there's a few pieces that are made but like the actual window power window motors we had to send out and have rebuilt because they don't they don't make rep reproductions of them so um, yeah, a lot of a lot of weird stuff like that where it was just like we got to fab it, got to find somebody to rebuild it, we got to find someone who has used ones and refurbish them. Um, pretty difficult vehicle to put back together. And that's been the number one comment we've had. People come by, where'd you get that? Where'd you get that? Yeah, because they, they want to find it. They want to know where it was, and they, so they can go get it. Um, you know, this is an amazing look piece of work and it's it's very interesting to see what you do with automotives you tying that into the to the industry and the fashion industry and bringing that in uh, as an advertising element but how did you get your start in cars so my, my father's worked in the auto aftermarket for years he still does um, he's here at SEMA wandering around somewhere um, but yeah I kind of grew up in it and what's funny is the the, the first car I ever bought was a 54 Ford Crestline I paid $150 for it I was 14 couldn't even drive uh, but we used a farm truck, hauled it home, and uh, put it all back together and got it running, sold it. And I was like, hey, this is kind of fun. And that's led me to owning over 140 cars um, over the years. Everything from Austin Healey's to, I've got a, a Formula a race car now, a vintage uh, SV1600 oh, uh, by nice. Beach. And I, I, for me, like every car has a cool story and there's a lot of cool elements behind them. And, and I, that's why I love doing these, is telling stories with cars. So we've always done stuff like that with like the, the Fairlane, with the, the King Ranch vehicles, with, um, uh, I had a, a classic Mini Cooper we brought to SEMA that we was uh, a really fun story. So let's tell, to do storytelling with cars. You know, and that if, if, if you check out uh, Mike's website, you're you're gonna see that because all his he's an excellent storyteller. I <laughs> appreciate that. And uh, it, it it is it's really fun to read in, in your ventures. I, I love the one you did with your dad at the Lexus driving school. Yeah. That 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 was a fun. It's just fun to see you including your family in it. Yeah, I mean that's you the know. thing. That's what that's what vehicles are supposed to be. They're supposed to be connecting community and families and and there's stories behind them. The reason why people have such an emotional attachment to these things is that they're burned into memories. Yeah. People don't build these cars because they need to get to work. I mean, like the one car my dad talks about is his BMW 2002. That's the car he married my mom in. That's the car they went on their honeymoon in. It's the car they did all kinds of stuff in. And for them, it's just such a. Uh, it's, it's such a connection for them to their past and that's why people do these things and all these cars have stories every one of them's out here has an incredible story and a reason why it was built and to me that's that's the fun part about the automotive world is telling those stories and finding them aren't they amazing they are there's so many to tell too and, 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 well, and there is there's like an endless list isn't there and just that first time when people see that going and then they associate the Laura Ashley brand with the Jeep and it just brings back all sorts of nostalgia. Absolutely. It's, it's like stepping in somewhere and you get that smell, that first whiff of a car, and you're like, boy, I remember this from my childhood. Oh, yeah, I mean, you get into a you get into a BMW and it has that BMW smell, and that's trigger stuff for people. So yeah, it's it's a whole whole different thing. And each car 
has a story. I mean, for me, like the reason why I've had so many cars is I, even like the worst car I ever owned, which was a Renault Alliance. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you remember. I gotta that. laugh. I, I I know what we're talking about here. So I mean, even the Renault Alliance, there was a whole team of people that designed that and built that and did the best they could. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> but I mean, there, there's a story behind that car, and that's the that's the thing I love. That's why we share on the GentlemanRacer.com is car stories and travel and all the things where cars can take you and do. And that's to me the fun part of the, of the industry is is find those stories, whether they're road trips or car builds or whatever. Well, Mike, thank you so much for yeah. you know for bringing this story, uh, you know, back to life because. It had had not been for you, this still be sitting out in a field somewhere. Yep, very likely, right? Yeah. And the, and then tying that to something modern, yeah. You know, a business that's modern and tying that and bringing that whole story, because I, I, like you said, I'm sure people have asked, but they're going to want to know how many units are being made by Jeep. Jeep's getting yeah. calls right now. Yeah, we've had a few people ask already. You know, yeah. so but thank you so much yeah. for spending your time yeah. with us Thanks and for so bringing much. the story back. Yeah, thank you guys. All right. If, if people want to find out more about your website, yeah. let's, let's tell them where that is. So you can uh, follow along on this build on thegentlemanracer.com. Uh, you can also see more on growinguptexas.com. So check them out. The stories are awesome. It's a great read. So again, thank you so much. Yeah. We appreciate it, Mike. Thanks so much. And thanks for watching.